test that you're talking about. It's Therium. Can you speak to how this test works? It brings in all these sciences of multi-level omics, the different levels of data, the protein expressions, the genome, the microbiome, and we get this really, um, we get a new level of insight on health or wellness or vitality that we've never had before. Can you speak a little bit about the test and how it works? Sure, absolutely. So the test itself, the Aristotle test, which is named after Aristotle as he was really the first person to commit to writing some nascent theory of metabolism. But we, we named it the Aristotle and it is essentially a targeted aqueous metabolite panel. So it's looking at the aqueous metabolites and um, these are the sort of housekeeping, housekeeping metabolites or we, you would be known as sentinel metabolites. They're called sentinel metabolites because they largely are embedded in the most important pathways, human pathways. So um, these are embedded in pathways that are indicative of human health as well as um, indicative of early stage progression of diseases that are you know, the greatest contributors to human mortality or morbidity like heart disease or cancers or Alzheimer's. And what we do is we, we, sh we once you order the Aristotle test, we ship you a dry blood spot kit. You take the sample in the comfort of your own home um, and with just a few um, drops of blood uh, onto our uh, proprietary filter paper, which maintains metabolite integrity and, and helps us in ensuring the fidelity of our results through shipping and processing, you send back to our labs. Once we get it in our labs, um, uh, we un uh, undergo uh, sample processing. The processing is basically where we separate the metabolites um, from the uh, filter paper using various processes such as homogenization, uh, sonication, uh, and then centrifugation. What we also do is we precipitate all the proteins because we, we don't analyze proteins in this test yet. One day we'll get to doing a full proteomics um, assay, but right now we can um, sort of analyze proteins or infer to the protein level using metabolite concentrations, but we're not directly measuring proteins. So we precipitate those proteins in our sample processing and we keep the metabolites um, in an aqueous layer, which then undergoes uh, analysis by gas chromatography, mass spectrometry. And that's what I've abbreviated previously in our talk to G GCMS, gas chromatography, mass spectrometry, is a technique whereby we analyze, we separate um, these metabolites and we look at their relative abundances. Um, and we do that along two dimensions. First, um, we separate them based on what's known as the retention time, which is the time that a molecule takes, let's say ibuprofen or caffeine. There's a time that these molecules will take for interacting with this column we have. There's a chromatography column that, you know, is sort of, uh, you know, your molecules are riding on a stream of helium in that column. And there's a certain amount of time that each molecule will take to attach to the inside of the column, the mobile phase of the column, interact with and then dissociate from and then keep going down to the column. And that time that they interact with that column is dependent on their uh, chemical structure. Certain chemical classes will interact more or less with others. And so we separate them on the time it takes to elute from the column. And then we analyze their mass to charge ratio, essentially their molecular weight, their molecular mass using uh, the mass spectrometer which sort of filters different, um, uh, it sort of analyzes a, a certain mass to charge uh, uh, range for every single retention time. Thereby we get this incredible specificity by using two dimensional separation techniques, by using gas chromatography prior to our mass spectrometry, because uh, although some molecules may fragment and have the same um, you know, mass to charge ratio in the mass spectrum, it is incredibly unlikely that they would have the same retention time. And so we know the retention times and mass to charges of all of our 126 panel uh, metabolites. We've, we've tested this with standards and compared them to bank spectra in you know, uh, databases like the human metabolite database. And so we know their identities based on their retention time and mass to charge characteristics. And then we can quantitate the relative abundances using sort of the, we get these peaks, right, for every metabolite. And we can quantitate them using the abundance under that peak or the area that's contained under that peak. And so we then take those levels of 126 metabolites and um, we analyze them using our proprietary AI. And that analyzes your data according to first 12 health domains. And these are including everything from cardiovascular health, liver health, gut health. These are um, health domains and models that we validated from mind data. So these are scientifically validated um, findings uh, in you know, peer-reviewed uh, journals with you know, publicly available data. 
that we've mined and we've created um, a validated model for each one of these health domains, liver health, gut health, integumentary health, reproductive score, environmental toxin exposure. And what we've done is we've said, okay, is this model overfit? And that's a real important scientific consideration. And that's something that we make sure that all of our models that we um, sort of infer to and, and infer using have been checked for overfitting, meaning that the data isn't too rigidly conformed to the characteristics of the training set from which it was mined, meaning that the model that we formed, is it generalizable to new cases? Can we apply it to new cases or is it overfit to the training data that we have? And we make sure all of our models are, are, are not overfit and they pass the, the generalizability test and we apply them to our customers. And we actually will correct. So we, correct, we collect a lot of biopsychosocial data, in court, including everything from diet and lifestyle habits to uh, environmental exposures, occupational health hazards, biopsychosocial factors like social connectedness or depression score. And we use this totality of information along with their metabolite scores to come up with multiplexed readouts, again, across the 12 health domains. And the scores are given on a scale of zero to 10, with zero being poor, 10 being optimal, and five being neutral. And then we also corroborate that, not just with the health domains, but validated models for disease signatures, 344 disease signatures that have been characterized in the blood. And um, these are validated disease signatures that we corroborate using your metabolic profile. And in some instances where possible, data from your clinical and demographic survey. And we generate a list of percent match. So what percent of your profile is overlapped with the known profile for phenylketonuria or the known profile for Soto syndrome or the known profile for thyroid cancer? And we give you a generated list. And then at the end of all that information, you get the levels of all 126 profiled metabolites individually. And you can see the levels of those metabolites. You can see the normative ranges for, you know, what's considered a healthful levels. And then we give you not only a brief description of uh, the metabolite in question and sort of something about the identity, chemical structure, some facts about how it was discovered, who discovered it, or why was it named that. And then we give you an implication of what the low values for that metabolite could mean. Because each metabolite could be low or high. And that has its own implication, regardless of, in addition to the disease signatures that are multiplex, in addition to the health domains that are assessed using anywhere from six to 26 different metabolites. And um, we give you the levels of each one, the implications of low and high values. And depending on your specific health results, everything is cited using the most accurate, up-to-date, peer-reviewed, high-impact research. And you can look up the, the DOIs and read the articles, read the science behind what we're saying, what we're suggesting, and what we're recommending. Uh, because you do get also a list of, of health recommendations per health domain. If your aging index is a eight, we might identify some factors in your clinical and demographic survey that are contributing to that and recommend you keep doing those. If your mitochondrial index is a two, we might recommend specific to your particular health profile and reporting of, of health information, we might recommend a CoQ10 enzyme. We might recommend HIT training for increased mitochondrial biogenesis. These are all very personalized and based upon levels of your 126 metabolites. So in essence, what we're doing is we're giving you more information than you know a doctor's office currently can. And we're analyzing it in a way that no human brain can. And we're giving you, in, who's in charge of your health, a sort of leg up in understanding that. And we're giving, if you're working with your physician in managing certain aspects of your health, it gives them a head start of where to look. And um, as I mentioned, we're only looking at the metabolome right now, although we can look at you know, things like the genome using metabolite levels. We are building out our, our testing suite. So our ecosystem will soon include an at-home long read 16S test of fecal microbiota. And we have so many plans for integrating this data and giving our customers even more insights than is just available from the metabolome alone. Because this is really a gestalt principle. This is a gestalt science, meaning the, the sum of the whole is always so much greater than, than the parts.